Let's go for it. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> <laughs> Just like you say, like nothing good ever happens after you say F it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Just f- it. We'll just go right. We'll just go right for it. <laughs> All right. Whenever you guys are ready, I'm ready. Hit hit the old button. Button Andrew. pressed. Andrew, do you get to see the uh, the Chris Rock special yet? Not yet. Come on, bro. It, it's tough when the kiddo I just wants ki- to watch freaking cartoons. I got a kid. I got jujitsu. <laughs> I got a kid. I got jujitsu. <laughs> I got jujitsu. I have a kid. And then I got to wake up early because I have jujitsu in the morning. I see, I see. You saw it in SEMA? I did see it. The whole thing. Dude, I, 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 uh, I love comedians. I've been watching a lot of comedians for many, many years. I do admit I have not paid attention to a lot of the modern day comedians. Just I just haven't watched that many of them. But out of all the things I've ever seen, that was the coolest one I've ever seen. And I also would go as far to say I think – when it comes to equanimity and stoicism, I don't think we've seen a better example in modern modern times than Chris Rock's response to Will Smith, which was he did nothing for a very long time. Mm-hmm. His response was mm. to not do anything. Full and year. I'm sh- yeah, and I'm sure he went home, and I'm sure he, you know, told whoever, you know, his kids, and like, man, I, <laughs> <laughs> this happened, that happened, and so forth, and he probably went off on it there but no social media post. I think mm-hmm. there was like a little tweet or something. There was like a little something. But for the most part, he just kept his mouth shut and he kind of <laughs> loaded up and he uh, unleashed in this show. But the show <laughs> was really well done. The way he kind of built towards it and the way that he um, kind of punctuates it uh, through the show, I thought it was really, really awesome. Yeah, I saw Chris Rock live a few months before it came out. He was here in Sacramento and a lot of the special was the same, but he didn't have the Will Smith bit in it. So that was really smart of him on his part because he went on tour and he went to all these places, Damn. but he didn't mention the Will Smith thing. So no one in the press could say, could like put it out there. And then he finally mentioned it in this special. And it was, God, that those jokes were fucking hilarious. They were so damn good. He went in on Jada and he went in on Will. Just, he went, on, went in on all of us. Everybody, because of what he said about social media, and I'm going to give a small spoiler, so if you don't want to have anything spoiled, then you can stop listening right now. But I think he he pointed out what we're addicted to, and I think people were like, oh, we're addicted to porn, or we're addicted to social media, or we're addicted to uh, drugs, or alcohol, or whatever. And he's like, we're addicted to attention yeah and i was just like wow he fucked everybody up with that <laughs> gary v what is gary v's thing what are we fighting for uh, mm-hmm. like on social media attention attention yeah, attention, attention gary is v's the asset yep. exactly he's been saying that shit for years mm-hmm. and it is kind of weird huh <laughs> like even right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's not like we're not going to click on our own stuff to see if it got you know is it working you know or we, do we get a lot of views is it successful we'll check the analytics is it you know we're we have sponsors, right? And we're trying to make sure all this stuff's going well. And, and then there's also just the narcissism of just, <laughs> do people like it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Booty, infamy, infamy, or being excellent. I like that. Like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? That was fucking, <laughs> that was great. If you got a great ass, you're going to get millions of followers. If you're hated, you're going to get a lot. And show if you're your excellent, ass. show your ass, man. Or lady. You got to show your ass. <laughs> anyway. Uh, oh, by oh, the way. Uh we were having a little conversation about alcohol and guess what I see? Lane Norton talks about some studies. If small amounts of alcohol acutely increase testosterone and do not impair anabolism. Additionally, small amounts of alcohol appear to be inversely associated with weight gain. These were in studies. Lane isn't necessarily, there is a lot more to this post. And if you guys want to check it out, go to Lane's page. But he's just saying like, you, you can probably drink a bit in uh without excess and, mm-hmm. and be okay and we know that there's a lot more nuance to his post though he's Lane, not uh yeah. maybe we can bring up the post that he made maybe like two days ago where he just this is a picture of him just with no shirt on he looks jacked Ooh. but uh i believe lane's in his 40s um he is a uh silver medalist in the ipf formerly which was probably six or eight years ago i don't know how long ago mm-hmm. I think he did at one time hold a world record in the squat. I don't know if he still does, but look, 
He looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, he's still lifting like a savage. Um, last I heard, he's natty. <laughs> I don't. He is. I think he is. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. competes. He competes in a, in, a, in a federation that does drug tests and so forth. And um, his point here in this in this uh, context, uh, which I think is something that we talk about quite a bit on this show too, is that you don't need to necessarily be super rigid. Uh, but however, the thing that might feel tough and the thing that might be just a uh, smack in the face is uh, it's hard to be con- it might be difficult to be consistent mm. because you got to be able to do this shit for a long time you should he both y'all like he's been doing this for shit for decades right he's been and, and it, it that that's the thing it's like you do it for a long time you stay patient you have good habits and lane has had great habits as far as his health you'll you'll look decent you'll mm-hmm. look good uh, but that's not sexy so yeah mm. Yeah, and he's talking about how he's still doing it while he's traveling. You know, mm-hmm. he's still staying in shape while he's traveling. His diet doesn't need to be perfect. It's because his diet has been very, very good for a really, really long time. And if there's like uh, little things that creep in here and there, it's not going to negatively impact him that much. Absolutely. Makes a lot of sense. So we got the mountain, Hapthor Bjornsson going after the world record in powerlifting. That's held by my brother, Daniel Bell. You should get a 23 and me. You guys should like see if there's any, uh, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, we're. There we're, has to be some relation. Yeah, we're definitely related. I mean, how com- how, how likely is that, that there's another bell, <laughs> right? It can't be. Can't be. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, Distant he cousins. To, he has to be related. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Daniel Bell has put together a powerlifting total that I think is very, very difficult to beat. Um, he has squatted over a thousand pounds. I don't know if he did all this in the same competition, but I know that he's squatted over a thousand pounds and knee wraps. Um, this video right here is showing him doing 1111 pounds. He's just a completely unbelievable lifter. I don't even understand the squat form either. Like he, he's, he has impeccable form, but I've never seen anybody quite squat like that. Did that look high bar? I mean, he he kind of has a high bar squat look to him, and he starts the he starts the squat um, like a hack squat. Watch his knees just move first, mm-hmm. and his hips didn't even really move. And some of that's the byproduct of uh, you know just getting your knees wrapped properly and 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 knowing and trusting those knee wraps. But man, my legs have never been strong enough to do what he just did right there. That's just. Uh, doesn't even make any sense how strong this guy is. So he's squatted, you know, 1,100 pounds. He's bench pressed 600 pounds. And he's deadlifted 900 pounds. He's done all these things in competition, you know, where they're judging. You got three judges judging your depth. You have uh, three judges watching you pause the weight in your bench press and lock the weight out. And then you have three judges watching you deadlift. And Hapthor has competed in powerlifting. I don't know how many times he's competed in powerlifting, but... He's more than capable and very proficient at powerlifting. But again, the combination of bench squat and deadlift yeah. that this guy put together is uh, is really something else. And so I, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if he can do it. One thing that's interesting about Daniel Bell is like, if you look at his leverages, his femurs look short as fuck. Like mm-hmm. he looks like somebody who has the, let's say they have the leverages in terms of his torso and then his femur to be able to have like just a really nice looking Olympic squat. Cause that, that it, 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 yeah, I think that's probably why. Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of, uh, he, from the videos, it looks like his, his legs are kind of pointed out, like bowed out. Right. Yeah. And when he gets into his deadlift position, um, he's super jacked and super big. And it kind of looks like he just barely is able to get his hand on there the right way. Mm-hmm. But then he ducks down and just pulls the weight and rips the weight up super fast. It's like, what the hell? Also, how old is Daniel Bell? Like how long ago did he do that record? Because he's still, like- he's been smashing weights for a while. Um, I, I would be, I would be shocked. Um, if he was like under 35, he's got to be, you know, probably getting closer to four, the 40, 40 year old mm-hmm. Mark. I think uh, Andrew, we don't know if this is true or not, but Andrew heard a stat that uh, uh, Daniel Bell was like 300 pounds <laughs> yeah. in the sixth grade, right? Yeah. Uh, I, lost I texted it, but... him to try to see if uh, we can confirm any of that, but that is, <laughs> that's some fluffy fluffiness. Yeah. And that 2,600 pounds that he did was in 2021. So like these were like some of these records are super recent. Mm. So I, that's one, that's one really interesting thing. I think you see it in a lot of sports, but powerlifting, you it 
you have some people that get really good really fast, but then to become really good, like you can get much better with mm. age. You know, it's not a sport that you have to be young right. to be killing it, you know? So yeah, you can be really strong and in, into your fifties really uh stand and start that big, big push that he did with powerlifting until he's in his, like he was uh, the age I'm at right now. I think, I think he was like 44 or 46. I'm 46. That's crazy. I think so. Because most people would say somebody's over the hump. Hair Project family, how's it going? Now, Piedmontese beef is a company we've been eating literally for years now because they have some of the best beef on the market. Tons of cuts, tons of different types of beef. Check them out. Andrew, where can they get it? At Piedmontese.com. That's P-I-E-D-M-O-N-T-E-S-E.com. And at checkout, enter promo code POWER to save 25% off your entire order. And if your order is $150 or more, you get free two-day shipping. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. <laughs> Do you think Thor can do it with like, cause you see, okay. So we, there's this video, the rogue invitational when Daniel Bell was lifting against Thor doing that deadlift ladder. By the way, do we know who lifted more in that thing? It looked like, it looked like they just squared off and they did the same, it is similar weight. weight. Okay. But uh, if you watch them both pull this kind of, I think they just both kind of agreed like, uh, let's just kind of chill here, but we'll just let this play while we're, while we're chit chatting. I think the big advantage for Thor is that, um, he could just weigh like 700 pounds you know? <laughs> because he's so damn big and he did a great job of recomping his body. Look, he looks amazing right there. He does. He's always kind of looked that had that superhero yes. look though, even yeah. when yeah, he was absolutely. even before, but now like yeah, he, even has... when he was pushing his thumbs through people's eyeballs. back <laughs> in the day. <laughs> yeah. But I do wonder how much weight he's going to allow himself to gain because for boxing, he went, I mean, he lost weight and now he looks thicker, but is he going to let himself get back to strongman weight, which is like four something, right? I'm assuming he had to be 400 and something pounds. Yeah. Uh, and when strong, he did, yeah, no, it was yeah. like 440 or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. 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 And when he did that deadlift, he did that, uh, like 1100 something pound deadlift. Mm -hmm. He got to be like 450 or 440. Ooh. Wait, why is there a guy in like, what was that? <laughs> that's what I was cracking yeah. over. <laughs> is that Tony? Wait, that's, huge? No, no, that's, that's uh, a, uh, well, the guy who smashes shit, Finn. Uh, is that Huck Huck Finn? Finn? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't be it, surprised if it was. I would. I would just believe. I that can't that's think Huck of anybody Finn. else who would be that, that is savage. So great, right underneath the Rogue logo. <laughs> just like <laughs> the people at Rogue are like, "What the hell? The so, hell we get ourselves involved?" The great in? thing is he probably wasn't even invited, but he just showed up, and everyone's like, "Fuck yeah!" If you guys are listening, there's a man in like pink underwear and a. Uh, it's and very hot. Make sure you tune into the video. Yeah, it has to be Huck Finn. He also grabbed like a beer, and that man loves to drink. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of like a stone cold vibe too mm -hmm. with the leather vest. So these guys went up to like 881, like 400 kilos, I think. That I don't know if that, oh yeah, these guys are, these guys are so strong. You don't even know like what their end weight is because they just lift it up so easy. So there's a couple things uh, working against Thor. Um, a lot of his training for strongman is a little different mm -hmm. than what you do in a powerlifting meet. In a powerlifting meet, you use a little bit of a more standardized deadlift bar. Mm -hmm. And um, I do think that in some of the strongman comp, that's definitely got to be him. <laughs> I think in the strongman competitions he was in, they use something called an elephant bar and they get those weights uh, kind of way out. They get a lot of distance on those uh, on the bar. And then the bar has a lot of whip and bend. Mm -hmm. And so there's an advantage. And then also in strongman, they uh, wear lifting straps and they utilize like a double overhand grip. Mm -hmm. um, in powerlifting, some people will use a double overhand grip, but if you're going to do a double overhand grip, then you have to do a hook grip. And I don't think that he's going to mess around with a hook grip. So there's a little more danger to like this under over grip. Um, you mm -hmm. can kind of blow out a bicep. You can blow out a bicep either way, really, but there's a little bit more um, danger with that kind of twisting that can happen. And then also in the difference between a strongman deadlift and a powerlifting deadlift in strongman, you're allowed to kind of hitch the weight up. So in, in powerlifting, they want to see that the weight, the weight's not allowed to ever come back down uh, when it's in the upward motion. Mm -hmm. So it can't ever oscillate and go back down. At least that's what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And so he's got a couple things that, yeah, they're just, uh, you know, it's things that he's got to train for and things that he's got to think about in in the next couple of weeks as he goes for this world record, which I think he's trying to break before the end of this year, right? I remember uh, Kaylor Woolham had mentioned, and I'm just curious about this, Mark, if you ever heard anybody else talk about this, but like once the weight gets like up into the 900s, 
that the bar bends so much that you can, I think he was saying that you can kind of get away with that o- double overhand grip without it slipping too much because mm-hmm. the bar is so bent. That double it, overhand or hook? Uh, you mean a hook grip? Maybe yeah. it was hook grip, but yeah, yeah. I think he was yeah. saying that it, it something about 900, it gets easier because the bar starts mm-hmm. to bend. I don't know if that's true or not, but I just like, like who, who's really going to know that except yeah. for people like him? Yeah, except for that monster. And then also like, what do you mean it's easier? You know, like for a normal person, like, no, it's not easier. But for that savage, maybe. But I'm just curious if maybe like Half Thor would experience something like that. Yeah, he might. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I don't think he'll, I think he'll probably just go with a standard, you know, under over grip. But yeah, that bar does bend a lot and you can kind of like wedge yourself into the bar and what will happen is because the weights uh, do bend the bar a lot, even even just like a regular deadlift, but but on a um, any sort of deadlift bar, it usually will bend the bar so much that you really don't have to stand up with it too much higher. Um, your arms can actually just, it's kind of weird to say, but your arms will just kind of get longer as you go to stand up. Yeah. And because the mm-hmm. weights are kind of doing this, they might kind of inch you up. Mm. Uh, you know, it's not like it makes the lockout easy. <laughs> Uh, however, it might be easier than a bar that's just regular, a regular stiff bar. Mm-hmm. And then I wonder what, like, uh, what was that bar that people were recently breaking records with? The Duffalo. The Duffalo bar? Oh, Duffin, yeah, yeah. No, Duff- the Duffin deadlift bar or whatever. So, mm-hmm. What's it called? I don't know what the actual I'll official name of it is, it, but. but that actually is a good point. That could be utilized. And yeah. Um, I know that, yeah, people were, people were hitting some records with that because it, it, it's designed that way. It's designed to have a little extra... A little extra whip. I don't know. All these things are just, they're they are funny. You know, they're they are interesting. Um, and you run into this in a lot of different sports. Um, you see this in in running. You know, people will talk about like, uh, you know, this particular race is a fast race. And this particular race is like, you know, set up for people to break records. And you hear about it in swimming. There are certain pools that are faster. Some pools are colder. Um, the pools are designed so they don't like have a lot of waves. And I mean, it's just, Mm. you're going to see this in like every sport, you know, people are going to try to just tweak something ever, you know, just slightly to try to make things a little easier, make things a little better. And yeah, Hathor is doing strong man in 2024. That's what he announced at the Arnold. Mm. So he's going to try to do that powerlifting record this year. Mm. All right. And blow Daniel Bells out if he can. And then he's going to go back into strong man in 2024. It's wild. So he's going to gain that weight back. I, I got to say, I mean, I, you know, records are records, you know, but like um, I don't remember ever seeing anybody this tall squat that amount of weight before. And I have definitely never seen anyone bench press mm-hmm. the amount of weight that he's able to bench press being as tall as he is. I mean, he does have the size yeah. to kind of make up for how tall he is, right? But mm-hmm. It's a, it's a crazy amount. Yeah, because like just kind of jacked up there, huh? They just, there's not many humans that are this size. <laughs> yeah. <right? laughs> like, so it's hard mm-hmm. to even get them to power lift. Well, and a lot of guys that are tall, a lot of times they have a hard time keeping that body weight on. And uh, he was able to fill himself out enough to where he has, has enough mass. Yeah, it's going to be, a, I don't know, it'd be interesting because Daniel Bell just has a completely different physique. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When Dan, you know, you, you see it probably, it's probably the most profound because Daniel Bell doesn't look like he's short. He looks like he's actually fairly tall. Mm-hmm. But in comparison to Hapthor, everybody looks kind of short. Um, but you see the most profound uh, impact on the bench press. Daniel Bell has kind of more of a powerlifting physique. He's able to shorten that stroke, kind of bench press off the belly. Mm-hmm. Take advantage of that, and so this will be interesting. Also, in strongman, a lot of times I, I don't know how Thor's record was done in strongman, uh, his eleven hundred pound deadlift. But I'm imagining he probably had like a a deadlift suit on or something. Like they don't care. They don't care in strongman, which I think is cool actually. Like who the fuck cares? Just pick the thing up whatever way you can. Mm-hmm. But um, <clears throat> you know the other thing that's miraculous about some of this, the weights that these guys are moving and. That 1,100-pound squat by Daniel Bell and some of the stuff we've seen from Ray Williams and stuff like that. I mean, it's just its unbelievable how strong some of these people are. Mm-hmm. But when I competed, I competed in a double-ply squat suit, and underneath the double-ply squat suit was double-ply briefs. 
and I had a belt over top of it and I had my knee wraps, you know, uh, as tight as possible. And, uh, it was just a different sport. Like that's the way I grew up into powerlifting. Powerlifting equipment came, <clears throat> came into powerlifting, uh, kind of around the time I got started. And, uh, that's how I was introduced to powerlifting. So I just always stayed wearing powerlifting gear, but yeah. these guys are doing this shit without any of that stuff. His 1101 doesn't look like he was wearing any, uh, any type of squat suit or anything. He it looks like he was just wearing a shirt. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think he just has maybe a knee, singlet. I think he has knee wraps on. No, no. The, the deadlift? No knee wraps? No. Oh, 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 oh. The, uh, the 1101 Thor, deadlift. Thor's deadlift. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he had no equipment on that. Jesus. Yeah, just some, just some straps or whatever, right? Pretty much. Just straps. Yeah. God, I think he's going to be able to do it, though. Let us know what you guys think. If you think Thor's going to be able to break it, let us know if you do. And if you don't, let us know why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he uh, who knows? Maybe he'll just get up to 500 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he is going to be getting ready to do Strongman in 2024, we got to assume that he's going to be gaining weight. He's start ramping year, right? it up now. I mean, I'm sure he wants to, you know, I'm sure he wants to keep things, you know, in a good range. I don't know if Stan Efferding still working with him, but I know that they, they did work together for a little while. And yeah, you just saw a half Thor. What he just squatted a th over a thousand pounds. Like, what the fuck is that about? Yeah. He just benched five fifty one. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. It's it's going to be awesome, but you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully, it will just help make powerlifting more interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, I guess new stuff going on on the USAPL side of powerlifting or the, the natty side of powerlifting. Mm. There's some drama going on. I ain't going to get into it right here though, because it's, it's interesting, but, uh, can you, I, I don't even know what's going on. There's a bunch of shit going on and that's not even the USAPL. It's the USPA as well. Right. You, so with the, with that USPA, okay. I think it was the USPA. There are some judges that had some sexual misconduct sits. So I think so there's some athletes who are now walking away from that organization. If I got that wrong, comment down below and let me know. Um, but there's there's some there's some drama going on with some top athletes mm. in the USAPL because there is an athlete that bombed out of a meet that mm. was supposed to do really, really well. Um, and now there are these top coaches who are going back and forth, but I don't want to get into it okay. here because it's just like, it's too much. I, I, yeah, it's it's I, too much. Yeah, I saw uh, JP had posted something, but it was like very vague and I tried reading it and I couldn't figure it out. So I, I gave up Yeah, and I feel bad for giving up because it seems like a huge issue. We can talk afterwards, <clears> but I'm like, well, I don't know what the fuck happened. Just say powerlifting's getting really spicy. It's okay. like there's drama and everything. There's drama in jujitsu with this Nick, Nicky, whatever, Rod and Gordon mm -hmm. steroid shit. And now powerlifting's getting some nice spicy drama too. Good. I don't some... know much about anything, but I do know <laughs> that there's corruption everywhere. <laughs> and I've been close enough to it to see it firsthand. And it's like yeah. kind of wild because you're like, mm -hmm. oh, wow. Even in this like little tiny sport that no one cares about. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Andrew, take us on out of here. <laughs> All righty. Thank you, everybody, for checking out today's uh, episode. Yeah, let us know what you guys think about these uh, records. And yeah, just we want to know what you guys think, if he's going to get it, if he's not going to get it, and why. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe if you guys are not subscribed. Uh, podcast is at MB Power Project all over the place. My Instagram is at I'm Andrew Zane. Don't forget to stop by powerproject.live. Links to everything down in the description below. And Sima. And then Sima Yin Yang on Instagram and YouTube. And Sima Yin Yang on TikTok and Twitter. Mark. At Mark Smelly Bell. Strength is never weak. Weakness, weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later. Bye.